Let's pick up here with some additional examples of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. This time, let's operate on a 3 by 3 matrix, which, as you can imagine, is going to take us a little bit more time to work with. This is the matrix, 4, 0, 1, negative 2, 1, 0, negative 2, 0, 1. And I would like to find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors that correspond to that matrix. All right, so the first thing is I should try taking the determinant of lambda i minus a. So the determinant of lambda i minus a. What does that look like? Well, it's going to be the determinant of a matrix that is lambda minus 4, 0, negative 1, positive 2, lambda minus 1, 0, positive 2, 0, lambda minus 1. So you realize that the lambdas are all down the diagonal. Now I've got to set this up with a determinant formula. So I end up with a lambda minus 4 times the 2 by 2 that's on the bottom, which is lambda minus 1 times lambda minus 1 minus 0. Okay. The second one is going to be a minus 0, and it doesn't matter what's after that, and then plus negative 1 times 0 minus 2 times lambda minus 1. I, I don't think I need this bar over here. All right, let's clean this up just a little bit. I'm going to get a lambda minus 4, lambda minus 1 squared, and then this is going to be negative 1 times negative 2, so positive 2 times lambda minus 1. I'm going to factor out a lambda minus 1 at this stage, and I'll get lambda minus 1, and what's left inside will be lambda minus 4, lambda minus 1, plus 2. If you can do that, that's good, because otherwise, if you expand this whole thing out, you realize you're going to get a third-degree polynomial, and then when you go to find the zeros, you're going to have to do synthetic division to get yourself back to the zeros of this function. So if you can set this up by factoring out a common factor, then that makes life a whole lot easier, because I can do this now without any synthetic division. All right, expand this out. I'll get a lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 6. And now set it equal to 0. So let's set my characteristic polynomial equal to 0. That inside piece factors again. So this will give me lambda minus 1. And then the inside piece factors as lambda minus 2, lambda minus 3. Let's just double check that. Lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 6. Yep. And so I end up with three eigenvalues. Lambda equals 1. Lambda equals 2. Lambda equals 3. Three eigenvalues. And that is a whole lot less time than if I had to take that polynomial that was up at the top, expand it into a third degree polynomial, try to guess what the first root is, divide through by that root, and then factor what's left. It would take much longer. All right, so now I want to find the eigenvectors that correspond to each eigenvalue. So now for each, All right, so for each one, we're going to do lambda i minus a. times x equals 0. In other words, we're going to figure out what that lambda i minus a matrix looks like, and then we're going to drop in a column of zeros and row reduce. So let's start with lambda equals 1. Hey, if I have 1 times the identity matrix, I get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, minus the original matrix. The original matrix was 4, 0, 1, negative 2, 1, 0, negative 2, 0, 1. Just watch your signs as you subtract over here. You're going to get 1 minus 4, which is negative 3, 0, negative 1, then positive 2, 0, 0, and then positive 2, 0, 0. Okay. Combine rows. You realize the last two rows are the same? 
So you just get negative 3, 0, negative 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Remember we talked in the last video that that row of zeros is important because once I have it, I'll be able to solve those eigenvectors. Now from here, I'm going to drop in a column of zeros because I want this to be equal to the zero vector. So let's drop in a column of zeros. When we do that, we have to set up parameters. So let's let x sub 3 be t. Will that help us in this case? No, it actually won't. Because you notice that I have values in the first one for x1 and x3. I have it in the second row for x1. But I don't have any values anywhere for x sub 2. So this is one of those sort of rare cases where we can't just say x sub 3 equals the parameter. we got to say in this case x sub 2 is equal to t. If x sub 2 is equal to t, then what is x sub 1? Look at that second row. That second row says 2 times x sub 1 is equal to 0. So x sub 1 is equal to 0. Now look at the top row. The top row says negative 3 times x sub 1 plus negative x sub 3 is equal to 0. And we already figured out that x sub 1 is 0. So we're saying that 0 minus x sub 3 is 0. x sub 3 is also 0. So we have a vector that looks like this. t times 0, 1, 0. Good. Hang on to that vector because we got two more to find. Now let's try it for lambda equals 2. So for lambda equals 2, the first thing we'll do is do 2i minus a. So the identity matrix multiplied by 2, 2, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 2. Minus matrix A was given as 4, 0, 1, negative 2, 1, 0, negative 2, 0, 1. So find out what that matrix is. 2 minus 4 is negative 2, 0, negative 1. 0 minus a negative 2 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. Those are just zeros. 0 minus a negative 2 is 2. 0 minus 0, 2 minus 1. Ha! Huh. First and last rows are multiples of each other, which means that I can simplify this right away by writing this top row as 2, 0, 1. I got 2, 1, 0. 0, 0, 0. So right away I got a row of zeros. Then if I finish that row reduction, it actually comes down to this. I end up with the matrix 1, 0, 1 half, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 0. And now let's drop in that column of zeros because we want to take this times some vector equals 0. When we do that, we see right away we got a parameter. x sub 3 is t. x sub 2 minus x sub 3 is 0. So x sub 2 must be the same thing, right? t minus t is 0. And x sub 1 is negative 1 half t. So our second vector is t times negative 1 half, 1, 1. If you don't like writing it that way, if you don't like the fractions, just write it as negative 1, 2, 2. Because these eigenvectors, once you found 1, all the scalar multiples of it work as well. So if you don't like writing it with the fractions, multiply them by something to clear out the fractions. All right, let's try the third one. The third one is lambda equals 3. So we'll do 3i minus a. 3 times the identity matrix, 3, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 0, 3, minus matrix A, which is 4, 0, 1, negative 2, 1, 0, negative 2, 0, 1. All right, subtract along here. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. A couple of zeros gives me 0, negative 1. 0 minus a negative 2 is 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. That's a 0. 0 minus a negative 2 is 2. 0, 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay. If I row reduce this, I end up with this matrix. 1, 0, 1. 0, 1, negative 1. 0, 0, 0. Now let's add in a column of zeros, because again, we're trying to set this equal to zero to see what we get. 
right, x sub 3 is t. This will be like the last one. x sub 2 is actually t again, because t minus t is 0. And x sub 1 is the opposite of t. So I get an eigenvector that goes negative 1, positive 1, positive 1. All right, so those are my three eigenvectors. And by the way, if you want to write it as 1, negative 1, negative 1, you can do that too, right? Any scalar multiple, including negatives. So I've got one eigenvector here. I got another eigenvector up here, negative 1, 2, 2. My third eigenvector is up here, 0, 1, 0. In the next section, we're going to look at what do we do with it once we have these eigenvectors. Let's take a look at one more example to sort of, sort of show you where we're going with this. So let's look at some linear transformations. Suppose I've got a linear transformation with matrix A, negative 6, 2, 3, negative 1, relative to the standard basis. First thing is, let's find the eigenvalues. So I need my lambda i minus a's. There's your lambda i minus negative 6, 2, 3, negative 1. So I end up with lambda plus 6, negative 2, negative 3, lambda plus 1. Now take the determinant of lambda i minus a, set it equal to 0. So I get lambda plus 6, lambda plus 1, minus 6 equals 0. So this will give me a lambda squared plus 7 lambda plus 6 minus 6 is just 0. Factor out a lambda, and I get two easy solutions, either lambda equals 0 or lambda equals negative 7. The second step, I'm going to write the question like this. Find a basis for the corresponding eigenspaces. It's what we've done already, except I worded it a little bit differently. Let's start first with lambda equals 0. If I start with lambda equals 0, I'm just going to get the 0 matrix. Right? 0 times the identity matrix is the 0 matrix. Minus the original matrix, which was negative 6, 2, 3, negative 1. And that's going to give me 6, negative 2, negative 3, positive 1. Let's add in our column of zeros and row reduce. Well, that first row just becomes 1, negative 1 third 0. And like we expected, we come up with a row of zeros. So set up my parameter. My x sub 2 will be t. My x sub 1 will be a third of t. So I can set this vector up as 1 3rd 1, or why not do it as 1 3? Right, second one, let's work on lambda equals uh, negative 7. This will be a little funky. We've got negative, so lambda i will give me negative 7, 0, 0, negative 7, minus negative 6, 2, 3, negative 1. Negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1. That'll give me negative 2, negative 3, and then negative 7 plus 1, negative 6. Okay. Add in my column of zeros. And as you can see, they're scalar multiples of each other. I get 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0. So x sub 2 is t. x sub 1 is negative 2t. So it looks like my vector is negative 1, a negative 2, 1. So the basis for the eigenspace is those two vectors that we found. 
right? That first one, pull it down for a second, is 1, 3. And the second one is negative 2, 1. All right, let's take this a step further this time. This time, let's find a prime to create a similar matrix. Now, you realize that this thing here is that new basis. In the previous chapter, when we were working with similar matrices, I had given you that basis and said, here's the basis, work with it. You realize this time I didn't. This time we had to find our own basis. So we're going to assemble the matrix P by taking the vectors in that basis and throwing them in the column. So 1, 3 goes in the first column. Negative 2, 1 goes in the second column. Is this invertible? Well, the determinant of matrix P is 1 times 1 minus a negative 6, which is 7. All right. So now I can find P inverse. P inverse is going to be 1 7th times, switch the 1 and the 1, and they look exactly the same, change the signs on the negative 3, and that becomes a positive 2. So my P inverse is 1 7th, 2 7ths, negative 3 sevens, 1 7th. All right, let's do P inverse times A times P. First of all, P inverse times A will give me 1 7th, 2 sevens, negative 3 sevens, 1 7th times matrix A, which is negative 6, 2, 3, negative 1. All right, these may come up as funky fractions. Negative 6 over 7 plus 6 over 7, oh, gives me 0. 2 over 7 minus 2 over 7 also gives me 0. 18 over 7 plus 3 over 7, 18 plus 3 is 21. 21 over 7 is 3. And then I get negative 6 over 7 minus 1 over 7, negative 7 over 7. Okay, so now take that and multiply it by matrix P, which is 1, negative 2, 3, 1, and let's see if something interesting happens. 0 plus 0 gives me 0. 0 plus 0 gives me 0. 3 plus negative 3 gives me 0, and negative 6 minus 1 gives me negative 7. What I've ended up with is a diagonal matrix. And you notice what's on the diagonal, a 0 and a negative 7. If I go way back to the top here, where does that 0 and negative 7 show up? Oh, yeah. They were the eigenvalues. And it turns out it's not a random coincidence that that happened. When I did this, I came up with a diagonal matrix with lambdas down the diagonal. And that's essentially the process that we're going to use to create these diagonal matrices. What I've done is I've created a diagonal matrix that's similar to the original matrix, except now it's got zeros everywhere except down the diagonal where those eigenvalues are. And we'll pick up with diagonalization next.